Mainstream media has a hard time hiding their contempt for President Trump. Just listen to what the views Joyless Behar had to say. My issue is the moral relativism between someone like Kim Jong-un and Putin and President Trump. I think it's easy to sort of sit here and say that. But the reason why, why the why, Syrian... Why? You, think, you think Kim Jong-un is less moral think, than Trump? Do you? Yeah. Oh, my God. I mean, I'm I not, think Putin is aiding and abetting of topic? Assad right now. On what topic? Chemical gassing of children. Last time I checked, America isn't doing that to anyone. Well, human and I think the moral it's hard for me to sit here with moral relativism about many things with Trump. If you think that Kim Jong-un, Vladimir Putin, and Bashar al-Assad, and President Trump are the exact same thing, it's, it's when you lose all okay, arguments me with me in every said. way. What I'm saying is that I see that the two of them are backing off of war, and I, don't, I see Trump provoking war. All right, joining us now with Reaction Editor-at-Large at the DailyMail.com, Piers Morgan. Is, didn't we once compete against each other? Weren't we like enemies? Or one? No, we were, <laughs> we were always fine. Um, good to see you, sir. Um, I it's guess great you, to be back in the show, Sean. You were always, always charming in victory, I have to say. This, charming nothing. I, we, you, we, it was never personal. There's 100,000 other channels. I'm trying to compete against all of them. Um, <laughs> you say Mueller's team is panicking and fishing. I agree with you. I, I don't think they've ever found anything related to collusion. And they just keep springing off into these other, well, he fired Comey. He has an absolute right to fire James Comey. And it's actually scary in terms of what I believe is a fishing expedition. And I think you agree with that. I do. And actually, I, mean, I find it extraordinary that James Comey, a former boss of the FBI, is able to write a sort of tell-all book right in the middle of the Mueller investigation. I mean, this wouldn't, this wouldn't happen in many other countries, Sean, that you, you wouldn't be allowed to do this, peddling all sorts of lurid and ridiculous details to the world. Uh, and, and it makes me think this, Donald Trump fired him because he didn't trust him, right? Well, he was right, wasn't he? When you read the stuff that's pouring out of his book, Donald Trump was absolutely right not to trust James Comey. And in relation to the wider Mueller probe, I just think what's happening here is that they tried to get uh, the proof on Russian collusion. They want to prove to the world that Donald Trump collaborated with Russians to fix the election. That's why he won. No other reason. Has to be that. And mm -hmm. so far, they have singularly failed to establish that. So now they're moving the goalposts. Now they're moving to stuff about his private life with uh, alleged allegations involving women going back more than 10, 15 years. Two things about this, Sean. I don't think people care about Donald Trump's sex life. Uh, I don't think it's on the same scale of misdemeanor, even if it happened, to what we saw happen with a, a Democratic president, Bill Clinton, who, let's not remind ourselves, had sexual relations with a young intern in the Oval Office while he was president. Uh, but thirdly, I don't think the voters care. I don't think people are out there going, wow, can you believe Donald Trump may have had a few flings 10, 15 years ago? So to me, they're now going after him purely to embarrass him purely to try and diminish him, to degrade him uh, as president. And I think that this is because they're unable Here's, to get the Russia collusion line to stick. So NBC News, supposed to be, you know, a trusted news organization, they're actually saying tonight that Robert Mueller is going to report on at least four findings of Trump and obstruction of justice. Here's what it is. One, the intent to fire Mueller. Not that he fired him, that he had a thought. It's like, oh, okay, we're going to punish his thought. The second one is, oh, did he craft a statement about the meeting in Trump Tower or have anything to say? Did he talk of pardoning witnesses? The power of pardon, as you know, Piers, is absolute for a U.S. president. And fourth, mm -hmm. pressuring Jeff Sessions not to recuse himself. I mean, he didn't have time because Jeff Sessions didn't tell him he was recusing himself, and he recused himself the day after he was confirmed. So I, I'm listening to, this is what represents news. You live in Great Britain. I love tabloid news. I really, you guys are great at it. We, we have pretty good tabloid news in New York. This is such garbage. And yet I think... It well, it is, it is, Sean. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it is. And, and what you just played there from Joy Behar, let's just remind ourselves what she has just said on a mainstream show to America. 
She has actually said that Donald Trump is somehow worse than Kim Jong-un or Vladimir Putin. Right? Kim Jong-un is one of the world's worst, if not the worst, dictator. A man who has repressed his people beyond any scale that we have seen in modern times. He starves them, he beats them, he tortures them, he poisons them, he kills them. Recently we had an American student who was tortured and later died after being held in, in terrible captivity for nearly two years because he took a poster off a wall. That's the kind of person that you're talking about with Kim Jong-un, a man who, along with his father, for three decades has threatened to destroy America at every chance he and gets Comey's to say comparing... And we're supposed to believe that the president of the United States is worse? I think it's ridiculous. And Comey comparing the president to one of the most infamous murderers of all time, Sammy the Bull.